And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you this incredible, inspiring leader. You will probably see her. You probably recognize her all over LinkedIn and all over, like just everywhere, because she's got some great content. And that was what drew me to her. I've seen her on so many different platforms, software, um, and, and multifamily insider. I mean, it's just amazing. Christy is just like everywhere and it's amazing. So guys, y'all give it up for Christy Fickert. Thank you. Hey, yeah, welcome. thank you. Well, thank you. Can you hear everybody clapping for you? You've got a huge yeah, fan I club. Hear, yes, I love the applause. <laughs> Well, Christy, I want to give you a chance to uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Sure. I'm Christy Fickert and my full time, I guess we would say my day job is I'm the vice president of enterprise growth with Reolink. We're a video software platform. But to break that down, what I do really all day long is try to make technology easy for people to understand. And I am on a mission to change the way we operate in this industry through video. So just making what we do, showing our personalities on video, that's what we do with our platform. But personally, I try to incorporate it into everything that I do and just really helping people. I know they're shy and they don't always like to get on camera. It's not for everybody, but it really is for everybody. And so I'm on this mission to help people understand that you do have something worthy of saying people want to hear what you have to say and video is just such a great way to get your person personality out there to the masses so whether you're in leasing and you know you're working with renters and just trying to convince people to come in for a tour or mm -hmm. whether you're someone who you've been in the industry a little longer and you're a little more experienced and maybe now you i've seen this a lot this year actually people want to be on the stage and they want to speak and get into speaking um so video is a great way to get your business noticed but also personally to elevate your brand so oh that's gosh. a little bit about me and what we do we we obviously make video easy here really <laughs> <laughs> i love it and and i love how you preface that that you're on a mission this isn't it, it isn't simply a job or simply you know things that you do it's a mission to help other people oh, yes that's why I, people I mean, look I've up to you using, oh thank you i've been using video since years ago six mm -hmm. seven eight years ago maybe even longer than that um <clears throat> but it, it was something I found that helped me tell my story, <clears throat> excuse me, tell my story a little better. And it, um, it got me noticed and I didn't want that mm. for the personal recognition necessarily, but I was trying to lease up a property and I was just, I yeah. wanted to beat the competition the next block over, or, wow. <laughs> you know, I was trying to get a speaking engagement. And so I needed people to notice me and to see that I would be worthy of being on a stage and I could deliver good, solid content or had professionalism, you know, all of those things. So I've been using it for a long time. And I think that we did see some acceleration with that over the last yeah. few years, but mm -hmm. still so many people I talk to who are so hesitant and shy and just afraid to put themselves out there. But mm -hmm. that's one thing that I've really leaned into is just putting myself out there and doing things that I'm always a little afraid to do. <laughs> right. I think that's great advice to put yourself out there and do things that are a little bit, you know, that, you know, cause some fear because you never know where that may lead you. And I think that's why a lot of people look up to you. They're inspired by you. And that's one of the reasons why I reached out to you because I love to connect with inspiring leaders. And I love to peek behind the curtain to see what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so Christy, I reached out to you and you shared with me three amazing points, three things that inspire you. And the first thing you shared with me, I wanted to ask you, you know, about these things is fear. You just talked about it. Fear inspires you. So share with this, how, how that happens or what, what does that mean for you? Yeah, this is, um, I think in my last job interview, which I've only had three jobs in my entire adult life, but so I don't have to interview very often but in my last job interview, I said something along the lines of I'm actually addicted to doing hard things. And I, I will, and no, I don't mean like rock climbing or skydiving. Like that's not my kind of heart. Like, yeah. That, like, I don't know. I, I won't say never, but I, that's not my cup of tea, <laughs> but just always trying to say yes to things that mm. My first inclination is to say no. I tried to say yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes and when I'm in the middle of those hard things. So for example, when I was doing this job interview and got this job, it's it's a startup company and startup life, if for anyone who's ever worked, you know, for a startup organization, it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. really, really hard. 
you roll up your sleeves and it's like that for a very long time until it finally, you know, takes off. And so that's something that I'll throw myself into. But then when I'm in the, in the thick of it, I think, oh my goodness, what in the world did I get myself into? <laughs> Why do I do these hard things? But when you get on the other side of it, it is this such a feeling of fulfillment and mm -hmm. that is what makes me keep coming back for more. And I realized that I grow the most when I'm in the middle of the hard. It never mm -hmm. feels like it at the time, but when I come out on the other side, I realize I learned this and this and this, or I learned what not to do or so that keeps me coming back for more. And it's just enough where Mm, I don't think I'm quite ready to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So again, back to like public speaking. I remember the first time that I was, you know, asked to present on a stage and I was super excited for that opportunity. But then once I got myself into it, I'm again thinking, <laughs> what am I doing? Am I qualified to do this? You know, do it. And so I did it and I probably did an okay job, but I did it. And so now the next time, you know, I got asked to do that, it was a little easier and a little easier to wear. Now I could probably do it in my sleep without even having like... <laughs> a PowerPoint or a deck or any presentation. Yeah. So it's like that with a little bit of everything. Yeah, and I love that. I think that's such a great piece of advice that you shared was that you learn the most when you're in the middle of the most difficult things or tasks or activities or situations. And that's such a valuable lesson. I, I really do. And I think that's one of the things that you, you noted on, you know, some of your conversation notes was, you know, comfort zone. You're not gonna learn much in that space, it's where you get into that difficult scenario, that difficult circumstance. And the only way to get into that difficulty is by saying yes, to jump into it. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I want that badge of honor. You know, it feels good when you're on it to say, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, just, ran, I ran for political office a few years ago and people thought, what are you doing? Why are you gonna do this? You're really uh -huh. putting yourself out there. And what, what a lot of people, a lot of people I think know that I did that but I did not win the first time around. And it was so humiliating. I thought I was a great candidate, had a great professional background, but I lost the race. Mm -hmm. And I came home, I cried. My husband and my sons were, you know, yeah, well, yeah, they don't need you anyway. Like, you know, <laughs> you, they don't want you, then that's fine. They don't, they don't know what they're missing out on, you know? So yeah. I've got this like little tribe me here at home. Uh, but I sat and I wallowed in it for a minute and I had to process that loss. And, but mm -hmm. then I thought, if I if I give up and I don't try this again and get it, then then they do they do win. Yeah. So you know, I ran again, won my next two terms, and had a great run in office. I think that I did a great job, worked across the aisle, all of those things. But in the middle of it, it's really hard, and you're really putting yourself out there. And sometimes you don't win, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're trying. And so if you really do, when you lose, you're losing very publicly. But I also feel mm -hmm. like that has led me to creating better better relationships because mm -hmm. I'm more authentic and more vulnerable. And I think that yeah. helps you connect with people. So, oh my gosh. And Christy, I highly that, recommend, yeah, I highly recommend trying things that you're a little afraid to do. Oh my gosh. And that, and you just, and you're, you're tying in and that your next point, which I think, you know, running for political office or even, you know, trying to find your next job or career or something, you have to have connections in some respect and <clears throat> nothing is as, public as running for public office, but, you know, running for that next job is, you know, it's, there's effort in that. And you share the next thing that inspires you is the power of networking. And I think that's such a valuable inspiration, but tell us how this networking comes back. And, and, and I want to share a little quote that you have on your, um, your show notes here is, which it really struck my heart. And I, and I love it so much is the good you put out always comes back to you. And I, I think that's so amazing. So share with us how this, the networking and the good that you share comes back and returns. Just share with us how that yeah. works for you. Oh my gosh, it, it does. And I get really passionate about this. Now, first of all, I am a people person, um, definitely an extrovert in every sense of the <laughs> word, but I don't know that anyone taught me about this or taught me how to do this. I think I just even outside of a professional environment in my younger days before I probably even had a real job, I just, I would be sitting next to someone on the plane and I would just, I, I'm just curious about people in general. 
And I would just ask, oh, where are you from? Or where are you traveling to? And, you know, I'd get to know them. And I know that there were several instances where I would be best friends with this person by the time we got off the plane and we would stay in touch. And this is back before we had social media, right? Now, now it's so much easier with these platforms that we had, but you had to really do this the old fashioned way. You either traded business cards or, you know, and you would email people and stay in touch that way. But you just never know what someone else knows or what they could lead you to. And it's not always the next next job or the next opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. It could be a promotion within your own organization. It could be something that I did as, you know, when I was a marketing director in the industry for about 15 years before I came over to the technology side. And I was just always, I wanted to be first. I wanted to try all the new technology and all the new things, but I wasn't really an expert in, in that field. And so I started following people by then we did have, you know, Twitter had come out. So we had that, or we'd go to conferences and I'd go to these sessions and I wouldn't just sit in a session and take notes, but I'd go up and talk to the speakers afterwards. And I would trade information with them and stay in touch. And Mike Whaling at 30 Lines, I can't, I think you've probably had him on. If you haven't, you should, oh. um, but he is so smart. And he just always seemed like he was a step ahead of what everyone in the industry was doing. And so I just stayed in touch with Mike. And every time something would come across my desk in the workplace. For example, I remember when SEO first became a thing. Mm, yeah. I called Mike and I said, what is SEO? And what in the world can you tell me about this? Because <laughs> I want to go into my meeting with my superiors and I want to bring this new thing to the table and I want to look like I know what I'm talking about. And so I didn't know anything about that, but I had networked and met someone who did and fed me some information that I could take into my meeting and, you know, look really good. And it helps me have a better career and move up the ranks. And my properties performed well because we had great SEO, yeah. um, <laughs> but that's just an example of it can help you internally with your company too. There are a lot of external people probably in your network that you can lean on and ask about. Mm -hmm. um, and I, when I do that, I, I try to network and I try to help other people but something always comes back to me to help me either, you know, you're asking me to be on a podcast and to tell my story and right. you know, that will in some way help me. It might help mm -hmm. me get a, another speaking engagement. It might help someone ask about Reelink and what we do here, but you just never know. You don't go into it for that reason, but it always comes back to you in some way. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I love that, you know, again, it kind of, you, it kind of connects to your, your first point is, uh, Connecting with other people can be frightful for some people, you know, just being extroverted. There's some introverted people, myself included, and it's difficult to kind of like go out of your comfort zone, but it really does pay dividends when you start connecting with people and touching base. Because one, you start learning, two, you have these opportunities. And, you know, you made a comment that, you know, when you're at a conference, you go up and go talk to the speaker. I can't tell you how amazing that feels as a speaker that when the the audience comes up and talks to you there's that is like one yeah. of the most amazing feelings after you finish a a, yes. a a speech or a presentation that they come and talk to you i mean that's wow yeah and it can probably feel intimidating i would imagine mm -hmm. if i think of myself my you know leasing consult myself or 20 years ago and you know i probably would have been as outgoing as i am intimidated to approach that speaker and have a conversation uh -huh. with them i think about the apartment all stars and lisa trezine and kate good and those big names in the industry yeah you know oh my goodness i could never imagine <laughs> approaching them back in the day i probably was really apprehensive about that but i think what you'll find if you put yourself out there and do things yeah. when you're a little afraid most of these people are so approachable yes. and that's what happened to me back in the day. I actually, that's how I got to be better friends with the Kates and the Lisa's of the world because I did, I went to a session and I actually started talking to them afterward. And I think I shared, you know, their article, or I shared some thoughts about what they'd spoke about on stage in a blog post or something. And so now I, I call them friends and I'm on this first name basis with them and they're all over the place. They know everybody and everyone. So if I ever do, need to say, Hey, who do you know in, yeah. you know, Dallas, Texas, that I need to call about that market, or I need to know mm -hmm. something about the market. I have someone to call. Yeah. Um, but I do one thing I do. So for those people who are extroverts like me, something that I do when I attend conferences, events, it could be, it doesn't even have to be work related. It could be a PTO meeting at school. It could be a mm -hmm. city council meeting wherever I'm in a group of people. I do not, number one, I try not to associate with the people within my organization who are there with me. 
I talk to those people all the time. And even if we work remotely and we're just, you know, together and we want to, you know, enjoy the personal time together, I want to go meet new people. And so it's easy to stay in your comfort zone and to sit at a table or to go into a session and sit with everyone who's there from your team. But Uh I do not do on purpose. I go and sit down on a table where I don't know anyone. And I just start asking open-ended conversational questions. Uh, Oh, Gary, your name badge says Gary. Where? No, where are you from? First of all, what do you Uh do? Tell me a little bit about, let me get to know you. And you'll find things in common. You know, it's really similar to just that first conversation when someone walks into your leasing office and you're trying to lease apartments, it's really no different. Right. Um, But the other thing that I do is I also look for and try to be very um, in tune to, I, I kind of have a radar for this now where I will look for people who are alone because a lot oh. of people get sent to a conference or an event without their team coming with them. Mm-hmm. And so they don't know anybody. And especially if you go to, let's say, Apartmentalize or one of these big conferences, those are so big and it can feel like everybody knows everybody. And yeah. so I will look for the people who are sitting and eating lunch by themselves. This is the old, you know, like elementary school rule, like go <laughs> sit with the kids that you know, is new to the school. Yeah. But I'll just go with them and I'll just, so I'll, as the extrovert, I feel like that's my responsibility to help people like you who maybe yeah. are a little afraid to do that to get the ball rolling. And so we all still make the connections, but mm-hmm. we have different roles that we play. In, oh my in the gosh. Networking. You'd be my favorite person at a big conference. Just <laughs> when an extrovert comes and makes a buddy with an introvert, it just makes that introvert's day. So, but I love that you have an intentional game plan before you go into these conferences to connect with people. And I think that is the power of networking and the dividends that you get from it helpful to the people that you connect with but also in return will pay dividends back to you as well and christy yeah, and the, turn into best friendships there you go sometimes you never know you may friendships. it's not just right? a professional you know advice kind of a relationship or mentorship but they become really good friends and it's the beauty of the industry i absolutely never, love it you never know there's all there could be a gift waiting behind that networking opportunity so take advantage there of it absolutely <laughs> so christy you also shared with me there's someone's always watching Now that sounds a little scary, but it inspires you. So tell us what that means for you. Yeah, I mean, I can give you a couple of examples of this, but you know, we all have stressful days. We talked about doing hard things, but when I feel like things are getting hard or I want to give up, I always think about who's watching me. Mm -hmm. So for example, back to that city council, when I ran the first time and I didn't win, And people said, just forget it. Like they didn't get you. They don't know what they're missing out on. Just move on with life. And I thought, no, because my boys were very young at the time. I think they were like nine and 11 or something. Mm -hmm. And I said, they're watching me. So if I do this and I just give up because I lost, Mm -hmm. what am I showing them? Oh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to try again, which, and so many people do this every, every single day. We try again. (laughs) But I just think about who's watching and what example I want to set for them. So that's one example. I think about, I talked about startup life. My last two companies have been, you know, startup kind of organizations. And Mm -hmm. there are really hard days and really hard phases and periods. And as I'm leading a team, I get people and we just, we get exhausted. It's tiring. It feels like, gosh, are we ever going to get across this finish line? Or is it ever going to turn around? And something that I I think about for me as a leader is, my team is watching me. Mm. So if I give up, they yeah. give they give up, right? Yeah. So if I keep going and I can like create that stamina, they'll come along with it too. Right. Um <clears throat> so many examples of that, but you you know you never know who's watching. I think about this now as a speaker, we talked about mm-hmm. speaking. I think about um I've had so many people this year. I think everyone's just getting inspired and they're getting their, they're finding their courage and they want to get on stage too. And they're wanting to speak. And so they're asking me, like, how do I do that? I want to do what you do. You look like you have so much fun. Well, I want them to be able to do that too. I want more mm-hmm. people to have that opportunity to be on stage. And so I think it, I think about that too. Every time I put together a presentation and giving it my all is who someone's watching, not just your audience, but someone yeah. else is wanting to be, or they're wanting to model your behavior, which is the best compliment you could ever receive. Right. But there are people watching you and I again I just I probably as an empath and an extrovert feel a responsibility <laughs> to you know pave the, that way for others and they're but they're always watching and that's what keeps me going when it gets really hard and really chaotic oh absolutely and I, I think Christy for me what you, what you've created is followable excellence 
So no matter what you do, even if you think somebody's watching or not watching, you're doing things in excellence. And that proves to be the reason why people just gravitate towards you because they are going, no matter what she's doing, even, even if she thinks nobody's watching her, she's doing it in excellence. And I think that just, that just speaks volumes of the character of the person that you are. And that's the reason why you are so successful. So big kudos, congratulations. And thank you as an <laughs> introvert. Thank you for, you know, doing that for us. And, um, just amazing. I, Christy, I could talk to you for hours, but we're, we're getting close to the end of our time. I don't want to give you a chance to share a closing thought before we wrap up here today. Oh my goodness. Well, I would say going back to my mission, I mean, I really think that I need to be mindful of who's watching and <laughs> I'm on this mission to change the way we operate in the industry. So I would say we've talked about doing things afraid. We've talked about networking. We've talked about mm -hmm. who's watching. You can accomplish all three of those with video. So I want people to embrace video. I want you to get out your phones today and create just a raw video and go post it on LinkedIn. Just introduce yourself, make new connections, talk mm -hmm. about something that you maybe have expertise in and you're willing to share with someone else. You have It's all about giving, not getting. Mm -hmm. So what do you have that you can give to other people? But I want I want people to do that on video today and just try it, just, yeah. just try that. Um, and if they want to talk more or, you know, they need a little coaching, they can hit me up, but oh my gosh, I, I just want to tie it back to the mission. Go do it. Yes. I love it. Guys, here's your challenge. You Christ, Put yourself Christy just there. threw it down. She threw the challenge down. Go make a video today because the thing that you have inside you may be of value to somebody else. Even if you don't think it's of value, put it out there, share it because somebody else may say, oh my gosh, I never thought about that or get inspired. So Christy, how do people get connected to you? So LinkedIn, like you mentioned, I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit. So LinkedIn's a great place to connect and they can also email me. It's Christy at reallink.com. Got it. We're going to put all that information in the show notes when this gets posted. So everyone can just click on the link and connect with you. But guys, I can't tell you how um, valuable it is to connect with Christy on LinkedIn. Go check out uh, her the website, Real Link. It's a, some amazing content in there. But Christy puts out amazing content as well. And she's one of those inspiring leaders. And if you see her at a conference, pretend like you are by yourself. She may be your extrovert buddy at that conference. Yes, How amazing would that there be? <laughs> Christy, <laughs> thank you. Great. That would be Maybe awesome. So oh my, thank you so much for sharing with us and being part of the super fantastic exchange. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you on the next episode.